what is an invariant reaction in a binary logic system invariant reaction is the reaction which occur when three phases came in equilibrium with each other like one liquid gives you two solid phases upon cooling and upon heating these two cool solid phases become one liquid phase one of the property of invariant reactions is that they occur at constant pressure constant temperature and fixed composition if you apply the gibbs phase rule to a binary alloy system where we have two components and three phases at constant pressure then we will came to know that the degree of freedom is zero so invariant reactions have zero degree of freedom okay now let's start with it occurred invariant reaction it's the lowest temperature invariant reaction that occurs at 723 degree centigrade and is known as a tectoid reaction in which austenite upon cooling gives you ferrite plus cementite keep in mind that every invariant reaction is always represented by a horizontal line as we have three invariant reactions so we have three horizontal line one at 723 degree centigrade second one at 1147 degree centigrade and the third one at 1492 degree centigrade okay eutectoid reaction is the invariant reaction in which three solid phases came in equilibrium with each other in this reaction single solid phase transform on cooling into two new solid phases to explain this mechanism let's take an alloy of a tectoid composition which is 0.8% carbon and cool it down from a temperature within the gamma phase region which is the austenite region initially the alloy is composed of 100% austenite in this region so composition of each grain is 0.8% carbon nothing happens until the it uh, until the invariant temperature is reached at this stage austenite has to transformed into ferrite and cementite but the problem is that ferrite cannot dissolve 0.8% carbon in its solution so it has to reject this carbon out of its solution so as the triple junction zones uh, and the gain boundaries are the high energy regions so the transformation starts at the triple junction zones and then at the gain boundaries now it's a schematic representation of a transformation that occurs at the gain boundaries here the corrections of carbon diffusion are indicated by arrows carbon atoms diffuse away from the ferrite because ferrite cannot dissolve too much carbon in its solid solution so it rejects carbon out of it and move to the cementite layer which has 6.7 weight percent carbon the layered structure this layer structure known as spurlite and it extends from the grain boundary into the unreacted austenite region the layered spurlite forms because carbon atoms need diffusion only minimal minimal distances with the formation of this structure the temperature now becomes constant until the entire transformation gets completed upon crossing this temperature the austenite would transform into 100% spurlite so just below this temperature we have 100% spurlite which is actually the mixture of ferrite and cementite 